A certain degree of administrative confusion can be expected in any government dealing with a crisis of, of this magnitude. But, but how efficiently did you assess the administrative system around the Prime Minister to be operated? Uh, I thought that the, um, so the civil servants, including the, particularly the health uh, and economics uh, um, private sectors, did a very, very good job in difficult circumstances, um, if, uh, if I'm honest. Uh, I, I think that the uh, political system around the prime minister was more mixed. Uh, but I don't think that was really as much to the fore in this set of decisions as it was in some uh, other areas. Uh, it was quite often chaotic, but um, actually I'd be very doubtful if it wasn't chaotic in multiple other governments. And in fact, that was what uh, our fellow uh, advisers from other countries said. Would you not have picked up the phone and said to somebody in Downing Street, you've completely failed to understand the significance of this threat, the emergency that this constitutes, the magnitude of this crisis. How the, you know, the system is not designed to understand a threat, even when it is top of the National Risk Register, where it is a health or, or I would say, other natural phenomena, in fact. But let's stick to uh, pandemics, because that's what this inquiry is more narrowly about. And whether it's called toing or froing on the part of government, whether it's called a, a failure to understand the, the degree of the massive threat or the magnitude of the crisis, there was a, a, a hugely important systemic failure at this point, was there not? Yes. I mean, I think there's a, a big question about whether it would have made a difference to what subsequently transpired. And I don't think we should draw that line too firmly. No. But I certainly think that uh, it would have been something which, on, in an, let's, let's, let, me, let me be mealy-mouthed about it, under ideal circumstances, there would have been a different response.